Hey, you're back here with Barry, and a special thanks going out for John. Last night this came in, and it's relatively new for sure. Trump signed social media executive order. Excellent news. Listen to it. It's about 18 minutes, and regardless of your thoughts on anybody, look at the actions they are taking, and it's undisputable as an outsider looking in who, again, cannot vote because being Canadian... You take a look at that, and uh, it's pretty amazing. There is no question, and I quote here, never in human history have so few had that much control over so many. And uh, just on what's happening with YouTube, even though President Trump did not mention YouTube, he is referring to all forms of social media have taken on a dictatorship type role. Well, anyway, He's cutting the budgets. Have a listen. Watch. Give you a uh, signed copy of what I'm going to be signing in a couple of minutes, and you'll see exactly what we're doing. Uh, they've had unchecked power to censor, restrict, edit, shape, hide, alter virtually any form of communication between private citizens or large public audiences. There's no precedent in American history for so small a number of corporations to control so large a sphere of human interaction, and that includes individual people controlling vast amounts of territory, and we can't allow that to happen, especially when they go about doing what they're doing because they're doing things incorrectly. They have points of view, and if we go by that, it's actually amazing that there was a success in 2016, but we can't let this continue to happen. It's very, very unfair. And you look at the statistics and you look at what is uh, going on, and I think everybody would very much agree with that, uh, including Democrats, by the way. I saw quite a few Democrats are saying this is about time something is done. So let's see if they keep that decision after they hear that we agree with them. The choices that Twitter makes when it chooses to suppress, edit, blacklist, shadow, ban, are editorial decisions, pure and simple. They're editorial decisions. In those moments, Twitter ceases to be a neutral public platform, and they become an editor with a viewpoint. And I think we can say that about others also, whether you're looking at Google, whether you're looking at Facebook, and perhaps others. One egregious example is when they try to silence views that they disagree with by selectively applying a fact check, fact check, F-A-C-T, fact check. What they choose to fact check and what they choose to ignore or even promote is nothing more than a political activism group or political activism. And it's inappropriate. You look at what's happened, you look at where they're going, where they're coming from. I think you all see it yourselves. This censorship and bias is a threat to freedom itself. Imagine if your phone company silenced or edited your conversation. Social media companies are vastly more power and more reach than any phone company in the United States, more reach actually than uh, your newspapers by far, more reach than a lot of your traditional forms of uh, communication. Therefore, today I'm signing an executive order to protect and uphold the free speech and rights of the American people. Currently, social media giants like Twitter receive an unprecedented liability shield based on the theory that they're a neutral platform, which they are not, not an editor with a viewpoint. My executive order calls for new regulations under Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act to make it that social media companies that engage in censoring or any political conduct will not be able to keep their liability shield. That's a big deal. They have a shield. They can do what they want. They have a shield. They're not going to have that shield. My executive order further instructs the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, to prohibit social media companies from engaging in any deceptive acts or practices affecting commerce. This authority resides in Section 5 of the Federal Trade Commission Act. I think you know it pretty well. Most of you know it very well. I would think you know it quite well, right? Additionally, I'm directing the Attorney General to work cooperatively with the states. He's going to be working very much and very closely in cooperation with the states to enforce their own laws against such deceptive business practices. The states have broad and powerful authority to regulate in this arena, and they'll be doing it also, and we encourage them to do it. 
if they see exactly as we've been seeing, it's uh, what they're doing is tantamount to monopoly, you can say. It's tantamount to uh, taking over the airwaves. Can't let it happen. Otherwise, we're not going to have a democracy. We're not going to have anything to do with a republic. Finally, I'm directing my administration to develop policies and procedures to ensure taxpayer dollars are not going in any social media company that repress free speech. The government spends billions of dollars on giving them money. They're rich enough, so we're going to be doing none of it or very little of it. As President, I'll not allow the American people to be bullied by these giant corporations. Many people have wanted this to be done by Presidents uh, for a long time. And now we're doing it, and I'm sure they'll be doing a lawsuit. And I'm also sure that we're going to be going for legislation in addition to this. And the legislation will start immediately. And I tell you, I've been called by Democrats that want to do this. And so I think you could possibly have a bipartisan situation. But uh, we're fed up with it, and it's unfair, and it's been very unfair. And we'll see what happens. Any questions? Mr. President, Mr. President given uh, your concern with Twitter, have you given any consideration to deleting your account, to just walking away from this platform you've been so critical of? Well, you know, if uh, you weren't fake, I would not uh, even think about it. I would do that in a heartbeat. I'm real, but the, sir. But the, uh, the news is fake. The, uh, if you look at what it gets printed in newspapers, if only the public could understand where you know, they're reading a story and they think it's real, and it's not real in so many cases. And I'm not saying in every case. You have some great journalists. You have some journalists that I have great respect for. But uh, largely, I find, at least in a political sense, uh, there's so much fake news, it's disgraceful. I would do that in a heartbeat if I had fair — if we had a fair press in this country, I would do that in a heartbeat. There's nothing I'd rather do than get rid of my whole Twitter account, but I'm able to get to — I guess 186 million people when you add up all the different accounts and uh, add Facebook and Instagram, it's a lot of people. And that's more than uh, the media companies have, frankly, by a lot. And so if I get a story that's wrong, I can put a uh, social media I, — I don't usually use the word Twitter. I use — I say social media. But I put something out, and uh, the next day or the next hour or the next minute, everybody's reading about it. So I'm able to refute fake news, and that's very important. I'd like to ask the Attorney General, please, to say a couple of words. And he's very strongly behind it, uh, backing it very powerfully. And again, we're going to be doing this. We're also going through Congress. <clears throat> well, as you mentioned, Mr. President, uh, one of the things that I found has the broadest bipartisan support these days is the feeling that this provision, Section 230, has been stretched way beyond its original intention, and people feel that on both sides of the aisle. This was adopted 25 years ago to protect the fledgling industry, and its purpose was to allow websites that were serving as essentially bulletin boards for diverse third-party uh, content coming on uh, to say that you're not responsible for the content of that third-party information. And it also tried to encourage uh, these companies to take down things like child pornography or human trafficking advertising and things by saying if you act uh, to, to remove this kind of objectionable material, you won't, you won't be liable for taking it down. Now it's been completely stretched to allow what have become really uh, behemoths who control a lot of the flow of information in our society uh, to engage in censorship of that information. Uh, and to act as uh, editors and, and publishers uh, of the material. So when they put on their own content, like fact check uh, uh, content onto other people's content, and when they curate their collection, and when they start uh, censoring uh, particular content, including in, in many cases at the direction of foreign governments like communist China, they become publishers. Uh, and they shouldn't be entitled to the same kind of shield that was set up uh, earlier. Uh, now, this executive order is, 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 is a very strong step toward addressing this problem. It sets up a rulemaking procedure uh, that will eventually be under the FCC uh, to, to try to get back to the original interpretation and understanding of Section 230. Uh, it also uh, empowers uh, the Attorney General to work with state attorneys general. Uh, to come up with model legislation that addresses this at the state level. 
and we're preparing federal legislation, uh, which we, we will uh, be sending over shortly uh, for review at uh, the Office of uh, Management and Budget. Uh, so this is an important step uh, to get back to the original uh, understanding. You know, there's a bit of a bait and switch that's occurred in our society. These companies grew because they held themselves out as public forums, as free public forums where a variety of voices and diverse voices could come on and be heard. That's how they grew. That's how they attracted the eyeballs. That's why people joined them. But now that they have become these very powerful networks of eyeballs, now that they've yeah. grown by holding themselves out as free public forums, they've now switched. And they are using that market power to force particular viewpoints. And that's wrong. And it has to be addressed not only through this executive order, but I think litigation going forward uh, and by further action on Capitol Hill. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, do you have any questions for the Attorney General? Yes, actually, I do. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, not only have you been against Section 230 and the President has been against Section 230, the Vice President has said he's against Section 230. Do you believe that the executive order that the President is about to sign in any way repeals or amend Section 230? No, it, it doesn't repeal uh, Section 230. And, and I'm not against uh, Section 230 if it was properly interpret, interpreted and properly applied, but it's been stretched. And I don't know of anyone on Capitol Hill who doesn't agree that it's been stretched beyond its original intention. I think this will help get back to the right balance. Mr. Attorney General, can you give us more details on the legislation both you and the President refer to? What do you want to do in that legislation? Well, we're still reviewing a number of possibilities, and it'd be premature for me to discuss. And one of the things we may do, Bill, is just uh, remove or totally change 230. What I think we can say is we're going to regulate it. It's a provision, and we're going to regulate it. You take a look at this as an example. This was just out. Twitter moments uh, on the Mueller witch hunt. So we won. We were in the right. You see what's happened. It's a total fraud. It was a total fraud. 76 to 1. Okay, 76 to 1. You look at it. You think that's fair? Twitter classifies the term illegal alien as hate speech. Illegal alien. But, and viciously. You look at what China, I mean, just article after article. Uh, here's one. This is our, this is the arbiter. This guy is the arbiter of what's supposed to go on Twitter. He's the one he thought that, uh, he thought, and if you use CNN as a guide, CNN, which is fake news, he uses CNN as a guide. His name is Yoel Roth, and he's the one that said that uh, mail-in balloting, you look mail-in, no fraud, no fraud, really? Why don't you take a look all over the country? There's cases all over the country. If we went to mail-in balloting, our election all over the world would look as a total joke. It would be a total joke. There's such fraud and abuse, and you know about harvesting, where they harvest the ballots, and they go and grab them, and they go to people's houses, and they say, sign here. No, it doesn't work out. Now, an absentee ballot, you can't be there, or you're sick, and you go and you register, and you do all sorts of things to get that ballot, and there's good security measures. But where they send out, like in California, millions and millions of ballots to anybody that's breathing, Anybody in California that's breathing gets a ballot. But Mr. President, that's not true. So California here, here, is... Excuse me, wait a minute, I'm not finished. So here's your, uh, here's your man, and that's on Twitter. And the amazing thing is he's wrong. And even no, no matter who it is, they will admit that he's wrong, because there's tremendous controversy on mail-in voting. And I can say this, the Republican Party cannot let it happen. Go ahead. Well, you, you know, Gavin Newsom, uh, Governor Newsom, has, has not sent ballots out to everybody in California. They're only going to registered voters. How many are so, there? How many are so, there? so what your, what your tweet yeah. said was, was, was not wrong. Okay, so that was not correct. It was wrong. Okay. Oh, really? So when he sends out 28 million ballots, and they're in all the mailboxes, and kids go and they raid the mailboxes, and they hand them to people that are signing the ballots down the end of the street, which is happening, they grab the ballots. You don't think that happens? There's ballot harvesting where all of us, you know, we had seven elections for Congress and they were like tied and they lost every one of them because they came and they dropped a whole pile of ballots on the table. But you don't think they, they rip them out of mailboxes? It's all the time you read about it. You can read about it, take a look. They do worse than that. In some cases, they won't sell them like to a Republican community. 
a conservative community. They don't happen to send the ballots to those communities. And there's no way of checking. No, you have to go and you have to vote. Voting is a great thing. Voting, we would be the laughing stock of the world. And if you just use common sense, you know that's going to happen. But they raid the mailboxes. They can even print ballots. They get the same paper, the same machine, nothing special. They get the same paper, the same machine. They print ballots. And Bill would have to do a great job to catch him doing it, or your state authorities would have to. But you have tremendous potential, and you have tremendous fraud and abuse, but you have tremendous potential for fraud and abuse. Go ahead. Mr. President, you had said in one of your Twitter, in one of your tweets, that you would consider shutting down Twitter and social media companies. Did you actually mean you would want to shut down an well, American company? Well, I think company? it's going to be, you know, I tell you what, I have so much, it seems, influence over Twitter in the sense of, people wanting to see go Twitter because of what I have. I have a vast number. We have a number of platforms, as you know. We have uh, millions and millions of people. Uh, I think this, if Twitter were not honorable, if you're going to have a guy like this be your judge and jury, I think you shut it down as far as I'm concerned, but I'd have to go through a legal process yeah, to do that. How would you shut down an American I don't know. Company. I'd have to ask the lawyers. I'd have to go through a legal process. If it were legal, if it were able to be legally shut down, I would do it. Uh, I think I'd be hurting it very badly if we didn't use it anymore. I mean, we have other sites we could use, I guess, or we'd have to develop other sites. But, and I'm not just talking about Twitter. Look at Facebook. Look at the tribunal they set up at Facebook. This woman who you remember testifying recently in Congress, her hatred was so incredible toward the Republican Party and me that there is no way you can get a fair trial. So this is not like it's supposed to be. This is not like it's supposed to be. So we're going to see what happens. And you know what? I guess it's going to be challenged in court. What is it? But I think we'll do very well. Yeah, go ahead. Mr. President, Mr. President um, okay. as to potential uh, litigation, can you discuss the timing of that? And what is the remedy that you're going to be seeking? No, I, what I was referring to, there, there is litigation going on all the time on, on Section 230 and its scope. And we would look for appropriate vehicles to weigh in and file statement of interest. So you wouldn't be filing an individual? Not necessarily. Okay, thank you. Mr. President, Mr. President, you President are you worried about the situation on the border between India and China? Ah, uh, India. He loves India so much, he's never asked a question other than an India question, and that's okay. I just got back from India, I, I, right? I just beat COVID. You're very I got back. I know. They like me in India. I think they like me in India certainly more than the media likes You're me in this country. Or, or no, I, and I like Modi. I like your prime minister a lot. He's a great gentleman. Great gentleman. Yeah, they have a big uh, conflict going with India and China. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah? Yes, sir. They have a big conflict going with India and China. Two countries with 1.4 billion people. Two countries with very powerful uh, militaries. And India is not happy, and probably China is not happy. But I can tell you, I did speak to uh, Prime Minister Modi. He's not, he's not uh, in a good mood about what's going on with China. Mr. President, have you spoken to Wait, the? Wait, are you finished? No, sir. So what? Yesterday you tweeted about you want to mediate between India and China on this issue. I would do that. You know, I would do that if they if they thought it would help. If I were the uh, uh, mediator or the arbiter, I would do that. So we'll see. Go ahead. Have you spoken to the family of George Floyd yet? No, I haven't, but I feel very, very badly. It's a very shocking sight. Well, Bill and I were talking about it before. It's one of the reasons Bill's here right now, uh, because, as you know, we're very much involved. And I've asked the Attorney General, FBI, and the Attorney General to take a very strong look and to see what went on, because that was a very very bad thing that I saw. I saw it last night, and I didn't like it. Do you think those police officers should be prosecuted? I'm not going to make any comment right now. I can tell you, I think what I saw was not good. Was not good. Very bad. Anybody else? Are you definitively staying in the U.S.-China trade deal? We'll be announcing what we're doing tomorrow with respect to China. And we are not happy with China. We are not happy with what's happened. Uh, all over the world, people are suffering. 186 countries. All over the world, they're suffering. We're not happy. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. All right, Russ, let's go. Thank Come you. on. Thank Come you. on. Thank let's you, go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.
Well, regardless of what side of the coin you fall on, I'm sure everybody, and as actually President Trump made mention in the video, everybody uh, should be able to find some happy medium into this kind of decision. Uh, without question, uh, I mean, look who's talking to you, right? Look at our videos, how they've been actually blackballed due to their ridiculous... Uh, what they call, you know, didn't fit their guidelines, right? It's absolutely absurd. It is a very draconian measure. I want to also try to get a point across that I've tried uh, several times before. All medias right now, all forms of multimedia or mainstream media, is it's, it's opinionated and it's largely whoever's writing the checks just follow the money and you're going to find that's where the commentaries are coming from. Uh, a point I would like to try and get across to you is we live in a world and technology has changed. It doesn't matter if it's correct, true, or anything of the nature. Just get it out there first. Okay? And when they're completely wrong, they no longer even apologize for it because they're jumping onto the next story. And in our fast-paced world, tell me I'm, I'm wrong here. Two, three days anyway, it's forgotten with. Um, in today's world, technology has made it, in terms of technology and media, it's made it easier to lie to billions than it is to convince them that they've been lied to. It's a very powerful statement, but it is how it was designed. Our social medias have taken on a self-proclaimed power of making editorial decisions rather than unbiased information, putting it out there free of any way, one way or the other. It goes both ways here, okay? We are not... This isn't journalism anymore. Um, this, I, I do believe um, it's a very good statement Trump happened to make, editorial decisions. Okay. Just go back also to the last, uh, out of the New York uh, Post, I believe. Yeah, it wasn't the Times, it was the Post. Just read through it on, on, on the previous video, which is from Steve Deese. Okay, just read through it and you just... I mean, you're reading their decisions for you. That's not journalism. That's programming. And it's done in such a remarkable way, it goes almost unnoticed. Unless you've changed your, uh, you've trained your mind to look at it that way. Anyway, I want to close here requoting from Steve also, Steve Deese. This made so much sense when he's talking about all the president really needs to do to get us all back to work. And that is because, again, unbiasedly as a Canadian, you'll see it's all the Democrat states that want to stay locked down and most of the Republican states that are the ones that want to get back to work and get the velocity of money, at least starting some momentum. i quoting Steve Deese, no federal money for any state denying its citizens its rights and liberties. If you want to stay closed and intercourse yourselves, I love that term, because you hate Trump that much, do that dumbassery on your dime. No taxpayer compensation for self-immolation. I couldn't agree more. And... Um, more and more people are catching on to this. There's no question it's swaying. Keep the momentum going. We'll keep bringing you what we feel is the latest, unbiased, and the most important pieces. There's just too many to get them all out there. Till next time, it's Barry and DR. Appreciate all your help getting this out to everybody. This is big news.